name is Mike Nason. Uh, I work for the Public Knowledge Project, uh, creators of Open Journal Systems, or OJS, and I'm also a librarian at the University of New Brunswick Libraries on the east coast of Canada. Uh, today, I'm going to walk you through, very briefly, the process of registering your DOIs in OJS and then submitting them to Crossref. Uh, for the purposes of today, I'm going to be using OJS 3.3, uh, which you may not be running yet, uh, but uh, it is the version that I'm using. Things won't be too different than they are in 3.2, uh, but you'll just want to pay attention uh, to where we're going uh, while we go through the process. <clears throat> so this is our example journal that I'm going to be submitting content to, and the first thing I'm going to do is walk you through turning on and then configuring the DOI plugin. The DOI plugin can be found underneath website in your uh, left sidebar, plugins, uh, and then you're going to want to scroll down a bit until you find uh, public identifier plugins. So we have DOI here. Uh, if it's not turned on, you'll want to click the little checkbox to turn it on. And we're going to hop into settings. So these are the settings for the DOI plugin. You'll see you have issues, articles, and galleys that you can assign content to. I recommend just using articles. It is the most straightforward. Some people do like to assign DOIs to everything, uh, but that can get a little complicated. Uh, and I would say it's probably not even all that necessary. Below that is the DOI prefix. You will have received your DOI prefix from Crossref or another registration agency before you start this process. Uh, you cannot assign DOIs to something without having a prefix. So it is an essential part of the process. And you can see that's reflected by the required icon here. Uh, below that is the DOI suffix. Uh, DOI suffixes um, can be a bit of a, a complicated thing for folks. What's important to remember about DOI suffixes is there's no reason for them to be human readable. Um, they don't need to really represent any information so that you can read them off the fly. They don't need to be the same every time. Uh, they can just be completely random if you, if you want. Um, what I recommend to most users is to use the default patterns set in OJS. It will be the most transparently simple for people. Um, but you can also turn on a section uh, that um, means that you can write your own DOI for every individual article as you go, uh, or you can make your own patterns based on this pattern generator. Uh, again, I recommend the default patterns if you don't want to spend much time thinking about it. Um, and you shouldn't have to really worry too much about what these patterns look like down the road. Below that, you have two sessions. Uh, uh, reassign DOIs and assign DOIs. Reassign DOIs is really kind of a dangerous option, uh, and I wouldn't recommend clicking it uh, if you have at any point registered DOIs with any agency like Crossref or Datacite or whomever. Um, if you've done that, don't click reassign DOIs. What it does is it removes all DOI suffixes from existing articles uh, and then replaces them with whatever you've determined uh, in your DOI suffix section. So it can be really handy if you say assign all your DOIs to your full publication history all at once, and then you notice, oh, uh, I had volume here, um, but my journal doesn't use volumes, it uses issues. And so you have a bunch of zeroed out volumes or, or something along those lines. You can remove them all and redo them. Um, so do avoid clicking reassign DOIs unless you really want to remove all existing DOIs and put different ones in. And then the Assign DOIs button is very straightforward. All it does is assign a DOI to anything that's published that does not currently have one. Uh, so again, the first time you're doing um, maybe all of your DOIs, let's say you just got a membership and you want to assign DOIs and register them all all at once, clicking this button will assign a DOI to anything you've already published. So it's very handy. And that's really it for the DOI settings. So I'm going to move on to the Crossref settings. You can find the Crossref plugin in this main plugin gallery, but the way you're probably going to get to it the most often is over on the left-hand sidebar underneath Tools. So we'll click on Tools, and then we're going to click on Crossref XML Export Plugin. So this is the basic uh, page for settings for the Crossref XML Export Plugin. It's very straightforward. There's a quick link to the DOI plugin if you need to make any quick changes. Uh, below that is the uh, information required for depositing to Crossref, which includes a depositor name and a depositor email. Uh, and then below that, you have the credentials you would have been assigned by Crossref uh, when you originally got your membership. So you have a username, and they'll tell you what your username will be, and they'll have a password. Uh, and depending on when you signed up with Crossref, you will either have set that password yourself, or they will have given it to you. So those are all required. Uh, below that is an option for OJS to automatically deposit your DOIs to Crossref 
when you publish. Uh, this happens on what's known as a cron job. Um, so if uh, every night, say, uh, maybe 11 p.m. Or, or 12 a.m., it will push all of your uh, DOIs that were uh, flagged to be sent that day to Crossref. So it doesn't happen right away. Uh, it sometimes takes a little while after publishing for that to happen. I do recommend everybody turn this on uh, on a production workflow. So ideally, you'll have to think about your DOIs very little. Uh, that's kind of the way you want it. The next option here is to use the Crossref test API. This is really only for testing, and you need specific credentials to test. So I would not recommend using the Crossref test API for really any reason. So actually, what you'll probably want to see is something a little bit more like this would be more standard. Automatic assignment and on the regular API. For the purpose of my testing, I do kind of have to do this, uh, and you'll see why. So I'm going to click Save, and you'll see up here my changes have been saved. So we'll hop over to the article uh, uh, section itself. So right here, what we see is all of the DOIs uh, for content that's been published that has yet to be deposited. I can see the little not deposited status on the right hand side here. At the top, I have a search function. Um, so I can search for specific article titles or authors if I want. That's probably not super common. Um, but below that, I can search for specific issues. And it will filter out based on the issue I want to publish in. And I can also filter out by status. So if I want to look at all the content that's not deposited or all the stuff that's failed, for example, um, I can just search for and get that content back. Below that, we have the actual DOIs and articles themselves. So we have a little select button that we'll need to select in order to deposit, export, or mark active. And I'll get to that in a second. We have the article ID. Every ID uh, or every article in OJS has a unique identifier. Uh, and this is the one for this particular article. And you'll see the same number is actually in the DOI suffix itself. It's part of the suffix that we've generated. Uh, we can see the author and title, the issue that that article is in, and then the DOI that we're going to have when we publish, and the status. Uh, and that exists for all of the articles that we've shown here. If I click on the title, I go to the publication workflow of that article. And if I click on the issue, I will be able to view the issue in which it was published. Below this, we have uh, a checkbox for validating the XML. Um, so when you're doing um, your registration, say, by hand, uh, so if I was going to register all of these right now, and I clicked Validate XML, and I clicked Deposit, the first thing the plugin would do would be to check to make sure that the XML that's being deposited to Crossref is valid. Uh, the downside to this is that um, it's kind of slow. So if you're doing maybe 15 or 20 of these at once, uh, it's going to really slow down the process if you have validate XML. But it's great if you only have a handful and you can kind of get an error before you would normally get a failed deposit. Uh, so it's just a nice way to check your work while you're depositing. Below that is an option for only validating the export but not downloading the file. This is a quick way to sort of check to see if your XML is valid in general. Um, if this is checked and you click all these and you click export, it will tell you whether or not your XML is valid and that's it. Um, so below that, we have these three buttons, deposit, export, and mark active. Deposit is straightforward. If I click one of these and I click deposit, it's going to send the deposit to Crossref. Uh, I got a little error up here uh, because my test journal is not currently functional that I'm working with. You'll see my status updated here to failed. Um, and I got that error. So a deposit sends that content to Crossref or tries to send that content to Crossref. The export button downloads that XML. So if I click the export button, it's going to ask me if I want to save the content. Uh, and then I can download it and I can review it. And if I want to just go this route, I can log into doi.crossref.org and upload my XML from there. And I don't have to use this part of the registration workflow at all. The next option here is Mark Active. The way Mark Active works is if I highlight these two, for example, and I click Mark Active, it will show up here as Marked Active. Um, the use case is that if I uploaded the XML in another place, uh, but I wanted to indicate here that I had deposited those DOIs, Marked Active indicates that I've deposited those DOIs elsewhere. Uh, and then I, I don't need to worry about registering them here. So that's really all there is to the plugin. As you go through, you can click article by article and deposit. Again, I got a failure because I'm not in an actual production environment. Uh, but that's how you would do the work. And then the one thing I want to show you on top of this is where the DOI actually gets assigned in the publication workflow. So in order to see that, it's actually part of the way submissions work in OJS. So I'll show you by clicking on this specific title. 
what a publication workflow looks like in Node.js. I can see that this version has been published, um, but that's okay. I can just unpublish it quickly. Not a big deal. So uh, let's say this is an article I'm about to publish. Uh, if I go to issue, I can see which issue I'm going to publish it in. I know it's going to go in volume number one, number three. I can see that it's going to go under articles. Um, I can put page numbers in here. Here's the publication date. Uh, I can check the metadata to make sure all of our metadata is set. So we have title and abstract. We have contributors, all of the names of the people who have contributed content. And then the next section is identifiers. So under identifiers, I can see what the DOI that's assigned will be. If I don't like it for some reason, I can clear it, uh, and then I can just as easily assign it. The number is the same um, because it's based on the article ID, which is, again, unique, uh, and then the volume and the issue in this particular suffix pattern. So I save this, and then I click on Schedule for Publication. It tells me what the DOI is going to be before I publish, which is good. I get a good indication so that I know this DOI is going to be attached to my publication, and I hit Publish. And that's really all there is to it. So you assign the identifier in your uh, submission publication workflow. You hop over to the Crossref plugin itself. Uh, if you have automatic submissions turned on, uh, then you probably don't need to worry too much about it. Maybe wait 12 hours or so and then check to see if your DOI is registering. Sometimes it takes some time, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and then if you don't want to wait, you can click on all of the ones you want to deposit. Click the deposit button and then they will be deposited and you'll get a status back. If you do get a failure, you should be able to click on the failure and you'll get the error specifically. Here you can see it's because of our ISSN. This is just related to the testing environment we're in. Um, but you'll be able to get a specific error that you can ideally give either back to uh, your service provider or to Crossref support and they should be able to help you with your issue. So that's really all there is to it. Um, that's the basics of configuring your DOI and configuring your Crossref plugins. Um, as always, if there are any questions, you can reach out to Crossref support or you can reach us on the PKP support forum and we'll do our best to help you out. Um, thanks so much and uh, good luck.